Thank you again for joining us. How to supercharge Google Cloud Platform with Enterprise Storage is our topic today. We're gonna to go through a solution overview and discuss topics that I think are on anyone's mind who might be looking at uh, not just Google Cloud Platform, but uh, uh, any kind of what you might call a hybrid strategy. Uh, we are looking forward to this topic today. This one's a lot of fun for us. Here are our presenters, these two happy, handsome fellows. My name's Greg Newman, you can see me on the right, and Doug Jury, I'm very pleased to have Doug with us today. He is our VP of Solutions Sales and an expert in how to uh, design and deploy and manage these systems. So very glad to have him with us here today. Let's jump in. Today's agenda. We're going to talk a little bit to set the stage we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the evolving storage needs i think you're going to see a list of items that'll probably look pretty familiar to you uh, we all know what's going on out there there's been a lot of change the last few years and more change to come that's for sure uh, we're going to talk a little bit about zadara and uh, why you might consider using it with google cloud platform there's some interesting reasons there and then we'll get into some nuts and bolts about moving data over to google cloud platform and and more broadly uh, what it means to deploy a system that allows you to think differently about your data management needs, uh, something that's not so, so storage and location oriented, but instead is more data oriented. And uh, we'll tie that all together in a complete solution. And we're gonna leave some time for Q&A, of course, because I'm sure there'll be a few questions popping up. So with that, let's jump in and get started. Doug, I'd like to... Uh, bring you in at this point because of course you know the market as well as just about anybody I've ever met. Um, what have you been seeing out there in the in storage land? Absolutely Greg, thanks so much and and this is my first opportunity to thank everybody for joining us this morning. Um, you know we love to put these together, we love to have some fun with with the crowds out there so uh, so thanks so much for that. Um, you know, the way I see it, I, I'm reading the tea leaves of course every day, I'm talking to customers every day and I see a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, shifts going on out there. The shift from storage management to data management. I don't want to manage my storage anymore. That's a thing. I don't want to manage my electric company anymore. I want to plug in things and I want it to work. I want the, the outcome of storage to be the data, the decision support, of course. Of course. Now, software-defined storage is an interesting element. The design of RAID controllers and RAID chassis through the years has been a hardware element. You have to basically go off and make an ASIC and you've got to make hardware work and all this other stuff. The concept of software defined storage says just simply take x86 servers, standard off the shelf, make the special sauce in the software. That's where you can change it on a dime. You can basically turn things very quickly. Flash base, hybrid, the ability to, there's a, there's hype about all flash, but you know what? I worked in the tape business and people tried to shoot tape for years. In fact, it's still out there. Um, there people are trying to shoot SATA drives. People are trying to shoot rotating drives. Uh, I'll tell you, they're gonna be around for a while when I can buy a 10 terabyte helium drive for next to nothing. Uh, it's going to still be uh, much better than maybe flash in some cases but you want to have this hybrid model you want to be able to do both which is really the next bullet point of tiering tiering you want to have your very critical files on flash perhaps you want the mother of you know, pictures of your grandmother and your uh, other things on perhaps the SATA uh, for cost effectiveness unstructured data let's talk about unstructured data for a moment and uh, also object storage um, uh, these are the biggest growing entities. I mean, if I look at some of my customers, the structured data, the SQLs, the oracles, those kind of things, they're important. They're on uh, high performance storage, but they probably are 10 or 20 percent of the storage in a lot of my customers. When we look at object storage, we look at uh, uh, NFS and SIFs, we look at files, we look at all that other stuff, it, it far outweighs it. Uh, the cloud, of course, uh, the, the last number I saw was that whether it be in a cloud or it be uh, either a public or a private cloud, uh, we're gonna basically see about 50% of the customers in the next couple of years uh, doing a uh, OPEX model, whether it be in a private or, or, uh, or a public cloud. And then governance and compliance. Compliance is key, uh, especially as you start to move the data out to the clouds, you wanna bas basically make sure that the security and the compliancy and, and all those, the sovereignty laws and things like that are there. So uh, if you took all this together, this is really where storage is heading today. 
It's true. It's uh, it, it's an amazing amount uh, going on. In fact, I think the massive scale of this shift has really only hit people uh, recently in the last year or so. Um, it's all it's all kind of finally become clear that this is happening. It it has. It, it's it's really and, and you know what? It's a head scratcher. It's a big head scratcher where people are saying, "Am I ready for it? Do I know enough about it?" That's why people today are joining this webinar. Uh, and I hope that people reach out uh, beyond this webinar and maybe contact uh, you or I, Greg, and uh, we can have a, a little bit more uh, uh, impromptu type of conversation as well, because people are are kind of confused about this whole thing. It's Boy, it's coming at us pretty darn quick. Yeah, it is. And now, of course, uh, we're proud to say that, you know, we, we kind of saw this coming and uh, we, we put together a company that uh, addresses it in a unique and we think very compelling way. Uh, and one of the features about uh, Zadara and, and what we do, our software and our services, uh, is that we really partner up very well with uh, hyperscale cloud platforms like Google. You can see here uh, some use cases uh, in terms of how we do that. Um, I, Doug, I know that you uh, you work in these use cases. Talk to us a little bit about uh, of course. Of course, I get emails, registrations, we'll call them, but I get emails from customers every day and they say, Doug, can, can I run my traditional NFS and SIFs in the cloud? And I say, well, absolutely. Uh, choose Google Cloud Platform, um, GCP, and uh, you can choose the Zadara uh, storage that connects into GCP natively and uh, you can run your native SIFs and NFS. Uh, can I do native SSDs? And we just talked about this a little bit. We have a lot of customers that are using native SSDs for their upper tier, the top of the pyramid, if you will, to be able to do that. Uh, hybrid clouds, uh, the ability to have on-prem and the ability to uh, connect into GCP is also something that's very important. I, I saw another study that said not only is about 50% of the storage uh, going to be in the next couple of years going to be in some form of uh, uh, public or, or private, uh, but if we talk about private, we talk about sort of maybe on premise still, premises still. So um, uh, I saw uh, I saw a number that said 90% of all customers expect some of their data to still live in their data center, but they don't want to stop paying for it. They don't want to have this capex model anymore. So hybrid clouds is really cool. Automated backup to GCP object storage, so I can basically click a button, click click click, off it goes. I don't have to go off and buy this this may be highly cost uh, uh, chargeable item called backup software. I can basically do that just directly to object storage. And then how do I get a petabyte, two petabytes, three petabytes into GCP? How do I do that? We're gonna talk about that in just a moment. Excellent. Customers include Fortune 100 firms. I mean, we, we really do run the gamut of, uh, of, of who is our partners from companies like General Motors and Pepsi and Coke, all the way up to, to Harvard uh, for their education and, and things like that as well. So uh, we, we're, we're running we're running the camera back and forth. Back to you, I think, Greg. Thank you. So let's talk, let's get into it. Let's talk a little bit about what, it, what do we do? Uh, Doug mentioned earlier about uh, uh, the, the premise of, let, look, let's just plug in. Uh, that's what we want to do ultimately if we can, and that's exactly what we deliver to our customers. We like to say it in, in its most simple form as any data type, any protocol, any location. And you can see what we mean by that here. Uh, we do in fact block, file, and object storage. Uh, we have a variety of protocols. You can see them listed here, uh, whether it's Fiber Channel or iSCSI or iCERT. And Doug mentioned a few of the others uh, earlier. Uh, we also, and this is important, and I know Doug, you mentioned it, uh, we deploy on-premises, uh, and we do it in the exact same model as we do when we deploy to any public or private cloud. Uh, it's unique in the industry, we believe. It, we're certainly the first to do it. Uh, and um, what that means, and, and this is important because it's so different, it means we ship the gear to your location and we only charge you for what you use. We ask you to please plug it in, turn it on, and we manage it from that point forward and charge you for what you use. Uh, and so having that kind of flexibility uh, really can allow you to achieve the, the kind of transition strategy perhaps that you're looking for. Because like Doug said, we've, we're seeing an industry that is in transition and is likely to be in transition for the next several years. 
We like to say that uh, what we offer really, when you think about it, is the power of the enterprise data center with the convenience of the cloud. And again, that comes down to having enterprise grade performance and features. It means being truly agile and flexible and having a, a real evergreen offering so that you can scale up and down, by the way, and that it's fully managed with a 100% uptime guarantee. Uh, that's the only one in the industry, as far as I know. Um, we can do that. We've been doing this since 2011, and uh, and we have our track record, and we know that we can we can uh, offer that 100% uptime guarantee with confidence uh, because of the way our systems are architected and the way uh, our services group operates. Doug, here we go. We're going to dive into a little bit uh, about what it is you get. How does this work? What absolutely, absolutely. Well, here we are. Uh, we found slide eight, and slide eight for you, all you folks that are inquisitive about how things work. Uh, we finally got to the the sweet spot of this presentation for you. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the Zadara Data Cloud. Um, this is a, like I talked about. It's a software-defined storage stack where we're basically going to build this Zadara Storage Cloud uh, using x86 servers. We see off to the right, we have our patented software, of course. It took us a couple of years to write all this stuff. Uh, if, it, if people want to go off and have a science project, then they might buy their own x86 servers and spend the next two years and several million dollars and go write their own. Or they can come to us and they can uh, basically use what, uh, what we put together and provide it for you folks. So what we do is we look at resources as individual elements. So we look at storage nodes, we look at cores, we look at drives, we look at HA uh, networking components, and we basically put this together in a configuration. Down below, you'll see the term RAIN. Maybe that's new to you. Redundant array of independent nodes, and of course, redundant array of independent either disks uh, uh, for data protection. That's been around for a long time. We take these elements on the, on, the, on the left and we put them together in a highly available manner, which I'm gonna talk about in just another moment. But basically we, we look at these resources independently and I'm gonna show you how you're gonna actually get to select uh, from a very natively, very easy GUI to be able to select various pieces to do some work for you. So, uh, so with the next slide, Let's talk about, on top of this, enterprise storage as a service. Well, you can't talk about enterprise storage as a service, which we bring to this storage as a service market. There's a lot of people out there that have storage as a service. There's a lot of companies that have enterprise storage. Enterprise storage as a service, there's, there's fewer out there to do that. So large SSD and caching options. That's something that, say, network appliance has been doing forever, but they don't do it as a service today. Block, file, and object. I don't know many people that actually can put together block, file, and object all in the same hierarchy of hardware, this multi-tenant environment that I'm gonna talk about. Thin provision volume, it's been around for a while, gotta have it. Large volume sizes, gotta have a big namespace to be able to get the job done. NFS, SIFS, fiber channel if it's on-prem. Uh, iSCSI if it's gonna be in the public cloud, of course. Multi-zone high availability. We're gonna be able to go across just got off the phone with a customer. They're building some co-locations out there. Uh, they wanted to be able to scale across a campus environment, uh, what we call a, um, a stretch cluster or a synchronous mirror. Uh, that comes with it. Uh, Non-disruptive upgrades. We have grown some of our clouds from a minimum of maybe five or six storage nodes. I told you this is a training uh, exercise. Storage nodes, disks, cores, networking. Those are the elements. So non-disruptive upgrades. What if I want to grow this? I basically add more storage nodes, my software automatically sees it and it introduces it, welcomes it into the club, and now I have more resources. We do that online in our public clouds, GCP, every day of the week. We basically adding and growing, but nobody sees that, nobody worries about that. Remote mirroring as well as uh, snapshot and cloning is on here, full cluster support. A lot of times when you go to some, uh, some public clouds, uh, you may be not able to run some native clustering and things like that, so we can kind of bring that back up around. And then at rest and in-flight data encryption where the customer owns the keys. Uh, the encryption codes are never written to disk. It's always a memory resident or on the, hopefully not the post that, that's sticking on your, uh, on your monitor, but, but basically we don't hold the keys, so you really have to entrust those keys to, to somebody that's very, very uh, important there. So that's enterprise storage in, in a quick look. We go to the next slide, we're gonna basically see us creating something. So we go to what we call our e-commerce page. This is where you potentially would spend some money. 
So you go to the e-commerce page, you select uh, GCP, it's circled there, uh, and now we basically are looking in the right area. We would then also select the region. So up above, we see select region. In this case, it's just blanked out, but that's okay. We can select many of the GCP regions. Protection zone is whether we're gonna turn on that multi-zone feature that I talked about. And now back to what I had talked about earlier in the Zadara data cloud is select the IO engine. In this case, I'm selecting a 200. But down below that, if I pulled that down, I'd see a 200, a 400, a 600, an 800, all the way to a 2400. What I'm doing is I'm selecting virtually the amount of cores that I'm gonna be using for my RAID engine. If anybody's ever worked in hardware before, basically to change a RAID engine from say a, a fast to medium to slow, you're gonna be changing hardware. That's that old hardware centric view of the world. Well, with software defined storage and what we've done here at Zadara, uh, we have the ability to select the size IO engine that we want. And there's some advice here, uh, five drives, uh, how many IOPS we need, all those things are, are part of the formula to do this. We also, on top of that, can add extensive cache. We talked about how we're going to take SATA drives and maybe add more cache to it. So we're going to get the look and feel of SSD, but we're going to pay the price of SATA. Boy, that's a great hybrid model. That's a great uh, uh, use of, of tiering. You don't have to move the data. You're just going to basically uh, give it the best performance you can in the lowest cost point. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time to talk about container services today, but suffice to say, inside this array, we also have the ability to run native controller, uh, controller-based container services, Docker container. So if anybody out there is using it for perhaps uh, uh, analytics or governance or any kinds of uh, comp compression, all that kind of cool stuff uh, in Docker's, uh, we should probably talk about that a little bit. And then the bottom part is the drive that we're going to select. Now, this is an example of a 1.6 terabyte SSD, a 6 terabyte SATA, and a 10 terabyte um, SATA. This will be different depending on what cloud we go to, but in this particular case, we have this mix of drives. So we're going to select a 200 engine at the top, and for this exercise, we're going to select four of the 10 terabyte SATA drives. So if I go to the next slide, I'm going to see that as soon as I hit the submit button on that page, my software then sort of wakes up and it says, oh, okay, I see you, Doug. I, I've got some things to do. And the things that it has to do is it has to build this isolated VPSA, virtual private storage array. You see it right here, Zadara VPSA number one. We're going to build that just for that use case. So this customer chose a 200 engine with four drives. So you see up on the top, we have two blue cores active and standby. That's great for highly available systems, redundant array of independent nodes. And we have four drives, isolated drives, not part of a pool, not part of a big uh, blob or whatever. We're, we're basically going to use this as just four drives or physical drives. So there's no possibility of perhaps General Motors coming in and complaining that they're having noisy neighbors uh, because Toyota's running on the same set of drives. This is an isolated version, which has really never been done before. That's why we have the patents that we've gone after. Okay, so we have the VPSA on the left, that's green, uh, and it's got its cores on the top. Now somebody comes right back into the same e-commerce page. Remember, we're working in a multi-tenant world here, but a single tenant of, uh, appreciation or single tenant uh, um, experience a customer two comes in or VPSA two comes in and they say, I want a 400 engine uh, and I need eight drives. So 400 engine, we have eight drives and now we have uh, two cores uh, on storage node one and we have two cores on storage node four and we've selected uh, eight drives from this particular mix. So now we have two VPSAs, completely isolated, different usernames, passwords, credentials, snapshot schedule, mirroring schedule and all of this. This is really, really cool when you're in a public environment, uh, so you can basically keep everything sorted out. It's also very good in a hybrid em environment where you, maybe some of this technology is on premise. So with the next slide, Greg, we're gonna take them to the next interface that we do, and we certainly don't have time this morning to talk about it, but within this graphical interface, and if anybody's ever run a storage area network or a RAID device or any type of you know technical device. Uh, there's just so much you can do with it. Here's a here's a great visual of this. Um, what it is is you're you're going to be able to see the drives you've selected, the caching you've selected, the the pools, the RAID, all the nitty gritty details are really going to be. This is where you're going to live. The e-commerce page that I showed previously, that's where you're going to buy things. You're only going to buy them once or twice, uh, a couple of times a, a month or or even a year. 
uh, but this is where you're going to live in. And here, you're going to basically start to see the tenants of the software-defined storage pieces. It's going to be tremendous analytics and performance metrics. It's really hard in a public environment to figure out where is that hot spot? Where is that drive that's getting hit all the time? And we can basically uh, get you to that very easily. Elastic provisioning. I can add drives. I can take away drives. I can basically look at my chargeback and my actual usage. Uh, I can do all these things through this nice, convenient interface. I have customers all the time say, you know what? I've been on a lot of RAID chassis, and this one's pretty uh, about as elegant as I've seen it. It works really, really well. So the next slide. This is one of the biggest ones. So there's all kinds of ways of getting data to GCP. Uh, if it's if it's a reasonable amount of data, we're going to do it over the network. Of course, uh, Google has nothing. No, nobody has better networks than than GCP getting data, uh, the ingestion of data, and so forth. Um, so for a lot of our customers, just move the data in uh, over over networks, whether they be uh, owned networks by the customer or maybe over the internet, which is encrypted. I mean, all all various things. But let's talk about large data sets. Let's talk about a petabyte of data. If I'm going to move a petabyte of data over a one gigabit pipe, I'm going to be waiting a long time for that data to get in. And I want to get started. I want things to go quicker. Uh, you know, we live, in the, we live in the era where we want things now. So what we do is, and, th and this is, I'm going to take it slow on this one because I know this is a real uh, challenge for a lot of customers. So we have our live data running on uh, EMC on the left, let's say. And, and you've had your meeting and the customer says, or your, your boss says, I need to move this petabyte of, of EMC storage, I'll just throw that team out because everybody understands EMC is out. Uh, I want to move that data, um, that, that payload to GCP. Uh, and then everybody kind of looks at them and says, well, how are we going to move a petabyte of data to GCP? It's, uh, it's a thousand miles away. Um, so we basically, what we do at Zadar is we ship a on-prem VPSA configuration to the customer site. So we ship it there. Well, we also ship a second one. And you might be saying, why do we ship two, Doug? Well, let me talk you through it. We're gonna basically put on the, uh, on the array or on the, the servers that are using the EMC array, we're gonna basically be putting a mirroring software or some syncing software, uh, whatever it needs to move the data from uh, left to uh, Zadara A. Once the data is there, we're also gonna kick off a mirror task to another array that's also on site. Okay, so I'll take you through it. Your applications are still running on the far left. We've now synchronized the data to A, and we're also mirroring the data to B. Now, essentially, the left, the EMC array, A and B are all the same. They got all the same data. What we then do is we break the mirror at step number two. We put array number B on a truck, and we drive it to the public cloud and then we install it in the gcp cloud environment so now it might take five or six days to do that right so what we're now doing is we're going to reconnect the mirror and we're going to synchronize the data that was changed since it was on the truck so now the far left emc is the same a is the same and b is the same it's all the same within just a few minutes uh, of, of asynchronous mirror time. We're then going to shut down the applications on the far left. We're going to recommit the applications on the far right. And we have successfully hydrated the cloud with a petabyte of data with literally a minute or two of, of downtime because we had to just change your workflow over to B. Um, now, it, this, this doesn't have to be switched over all in one fell swoop. You can say, all right, I'm going to stop running application A on the left, and I'm going to bring up A on the right. I'm going to take the application B on the left and bring up B on the right. I'm going to take application C on the left and bring up C on the right. You may have 100 applications that have moved on that truck, and we're going to basically bring them up one at a time, making sure that we're doing this in a very uh, educated and a very uh, consistent manner. So we talk people through this all the time. Uh, it's a great professional services proper, uh, opportunity for us to help customers that are trying to really trying to hydrate the cloud. So I hope I didn't make that too complex. Greg, did you understand all that? <laughs> I did, Doug. Thank you. I was listening uh, and telling myself, you know what? You actually made it sound pretty clear to me. 
uh, but it is something that people don't encounter very often and and it can seem a bit daunting uh, and and it's you know probably best if you do have requirements like this to uh, to get in touch and we can walk you through it because um, you're right we can do it any number of ways and, and the point is to to map to whatever your your particular requirements and your journey uh, look like absolutely uh, so, and, and to, to support what Doug was saying, let me show you a map. Uh, we have, we, we like to say the sun never sets on Zadara. We have 171 storage clouds around the world at, at current count. Uh, that number keeps growing. Uh, and there, there are a number of advantages that come uh, from this. This is really, you like to think of it like an ecosystem. Uh, these storage clouds are running uh, in uh, partner and co-location environments. We have, uh, as Doug was mentioning, we have uh, direct connections to Google and uh, other hyperscale cloud providers. And uh, what that means is that we can architect a solution that absolutely fits whatever your requirements might be. We were just on the phone uh, yesterday with a customer who's uh, looking to do uh, some very interesting things. They, they know they have to operate in Europe and they, they set up a high availability a solution that runs between uh, Dublin and Frankfurt. And, uh, and they have a separate system going between uh, Oregon and Virginia. Uh, and we're able to architect that. We understand what they're trying to do. And we're able to put all of that together in, in one solution that then they can manage in one unified way. Uh, so the, uh, the footprint that we maintain is an integral part of the service that we provide. And who do we provide it to? Well, uh, Doug mentioned at the top of our call uh, in, our, in our session here together, a few of those names, you'll see a few more here. Uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of, of customers, and uh, we picked out a few that we think uh, represent a cross-section of uh, industries and, uh, and companies. Uh, you know, different industries have different requirements. We've encountered them now in the seven or eight years we've been doing this. We've encountered uh, all sorts of situations, and chances are we've, uh, we've already encountered the situation you might be facing. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, to summarize, if you will, a little bit about why uh, Zadara and the Google Cloud Platform? Um, again, you know, it, this really comes down to, to a single word in a lot of cases, and that's flexibility. And that flexibility is not just uh, for today, right? This has to do with not being totally sure about what tomorrow looks like. It, it's okay to not know. In, in this environment and what's happening right now, uh, I don't know anybody whose crystal ball extends beyond uh, the next six months or a year. Uh, so having the flexibility to to make changes and, and to, to go a, a different direction a year from now uh, can be hugely valuable and then doug touched on some of these other points earlier so uh, let's just summarize them when we talk about going beyond the volume obviously we're talking about um, in the cloud and in a cloud style environment setting up a more uh, sophisticated arrangement uh, than, than those of us who have grown used to cloud storage and what that means uh, we, we can see now that, that Zadara adds an additional dimension. Uh, tiering matters, we know that. Um, and then I just mentioned region to region. I just mentioned uh, the ability to do things uh, within regions. Uh, data sovereignty is huge. Look, data governance is huge. We know this. Um, there, we don't need to get into an extended discussion. In fact, we have another webinar on that topic, by the way, if you're interested, and we'd be happy to share that with you. And you can go to our website uh, and learn more about that topic. Uh, but it's huge, and uh, we take it very seriously here. Uh, and then this whole notion of the storage black box uh, really does matter. Um, Doug, I really liked what you said about our interface. You know, too often I think we we make the mistake here, uh, if we're going to um, criticize our own performance a little bit at Zadara, well, because we operate a service, we forget sometimes that that having that software dashboard and steering wheel, if you will, uh, really matters. And our engineers have put a ton of effort behind it. Uh, it is really slick and, and simple to use. It, it's got an, a nice balance between looking like a traditional interface uh, so that everything is kind of, you know, in the familiar spots and everything, you know, works the way you kind of worked before. Uh, but then it has all the advanced features that you want. So uh, that's not to be discounted. It, it matters, right? When you're working with a company like Zadar, you want to know you're still in control and you are. So. I've tried to give you a quick rundown, Doug. I'm I'm happy to hear if I've missed anything. I want our I want our group to know. Uh, no, I think I think it's good. What I was going to ask, um, uh, if 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 you could go back one slide, Greg. I wanted to I wanted to we I think we have a few extra minutes, and I wanted to 
give a tour of a couple of accounts for customers. Well, that's, that's a great uh, idea. Out here. So yeah, we got a few minutes. Why don't we Why don't we keep going a little bit here? Um, so I can pick out, of course, any of these. But let me let me pick on Harvard University for a moment. Uh, Harvard wanted to deploy uh, uh, an NFS SIFS environment for their uh, adult learning education, extended uh, education uh, throughout the weeks when people want to go in and take classware and things like that. Uh, they wanted to move this to the public cloud. They wanted to have access to it uh, across the world. Uh, and they wanted to have people be able to do that. Um, they found that the tools that were available in the public cloud today just weren't really ready for this kind of an application. Harvard has been with us for almost four years now and they've grown. They do a really interesting thing, which I like a lot. Uh, when they're working on, now they, of course they have this, this adult education piece, but they also have uh, uh, development and things like that. We have a tool called um, Hibernation. And Hibernation just says, you know, I, I am not gonna be using my storage. It's, a, it's a, remember, Harvard is gonna be a design center. Uh, I, I'm gonna let my, uh, my graduate students go for the weekend. Uh, is there a way I can drop my price a little bit? And the answer to that is yes, we can allow you to hibernate it and the cost associated with the engine goes away during hibernation. You can't get to your storage, but your data is still there. It's happy, it's well protected, but you're just not paying for the controller. So basically we're taking an account the way customers work uh, with the way they want their cloud to look. So that's kind of a really key feature for Harvard for that. FTI Consulting, I like, to, I like to pick on a little bit because I just came through that hydration story and we hydrated two petabytes, two public clouds from their facility down in Annapolis, Maryland. And so we basically shipped those, uh, those arrays to their facilities. Uh, we have them uh, hydrate those arrays. We put them on a truck, we shipped them up, we did the mirror again, and we got it all working. Now from that, those two petabytes, uh, they're well over, I think, seven petabytes today. Uh, they're, in, uh, they're in regions all over the world. One of the biggest advantages they liked with us is, is they can go to a lots of different regions in the world and they basically have the ability to do this. So their goal is to be to be completely out of the data center business here in the next year or so. Uh, and that'll probably put them at around 10 petabytes uh, in a public cloud. And, and I'm really glad to say that uh, we've earned their business. And, uh, and hopefully that 10 petabytes is, is gonna be Zadaris and, uh, and also public, public, public clouds as well. So I just wanted to kind of, uh, Greg, jump on a couple of those accounts to kind of pound home the topic uh, that we're break, basically bringing to bear here. That's, that's cool, thanks for doing that, it's a great idea, thank you. I hope that everybody found those stories interesting, I did. Uh, and so like we said, we have uh, a number of features we've summarized here for you today what we believe are compelling reasons to take a serious look at, uh, at adding Zadara to your mix and to your strategy as you move forward and, and look at uh, embracing the cloud and whatever that means for you and your business. Uh, and Google Cloud Platform is an excellent platform. We're, we're proud and glad to be partners with them. And if, uh, if Google Cloud is gonna be part of your uh, strategy going forward, you can see that uh, Zadara has uh, um, a, a compelling offer to make in terms of uh, how to work uh, effectively within Google Cloud and uh, and to extend the benefits that you get from Google Cloud. Uh, I thought that as the marketing guy, I thought I'd put in a, a little offer here. Again, we uh, we'd be happy to extend an offer to everybody on this on this webinar today, uh, a five hundred dollar credit toward uh, the uh, the service fees that uh, we have here at Zadara. And so. Uh, please uh, give us a holler, send us a note at sales at zadara.com and uh, let us know if you'd like to take advantage of this offer. We'd be happy to help. And I wanna, I wanna say one thing, Greg, before you move on is, is we won't cash this uh, $500 promotional credit in until you go through a free seven day trial. So you get a free seven day trial uh, before the clock starts uh, and then basically you can apply this to whatever you've consumed so it really is even better than the five hundred dollars because you get a free week to kind of splash around and do what you need to as well so uh, so anyway it, it just keeps getting better <laughs> thanks that's true we do have that and that offer is available on our website you can go to our website and see uh, the seven day trial and sign up for it uh, so i want to thank everybody it's 8 35 we try to be respectful of people's time looks like we're right on time in terms of what we planned and we have now a few minutes left for questions. If you do have questions about what you've learned today or you have questions about Zadara in general, uh, please do type them into the text interface 
uh, in the webinar, uh, the GoToWebinar uh, toolbar that you have on your screen, and we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, okay, good. I see some people are typing some things in, so we'll just take a, take a minute here to get some questions lined up. Uh, and Doug, maybe uh, maybe you can help me answer some of them. That could, yeah, could I see one. I see one just came in. A kind of a technical in nature, which I, I kind of like to see. Uh, we talked about. They said you talked about different protocols. Uh, does your solution allow you to uh, support both both the NFS and a SIFS mount to the same set of storage? Uh, and the answer is yes. You certainly may. Uh, you can basically have this cross-mounted to NFS and SIFS. Uh, and remember, we also support iSCSI as well. So, uh, so yes, uh, very similar to what you could do, you know, back at your home data center as well. So there's a protocol question for everybody. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good one. I agree. Uh, somebody else asked, um, tell me more about your pricing model. How, how does this work, actually? Doug, you've got a good handle on. on sure. Let's go back to go back to the uh, the interface where we created the VPSA, and let's go through that a little bit again on slide number ten. If you want to go back to ten for me, uh, we'll answer that one firsthand right here. So right there, what we do is, like I said, we 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 weigh the resources within our software defined storage stack with a price. So in this case, I've selected a two hundred engine. That's forty nine cents per hour. Uh, we treat an, uh, a typical month as around seven hundred and thirty hours a month. So you'd take 49 time, uh, uh, for an hour times 730, and that would be the price for that engine. If you look down here, let's say we selected those 10 terabyte drives. Uh, we basically uh, have 30 cents per hour for those drives. We add that to the engine cost. And then let's say we wanted to extend the cash out. Uh, we're going to basically pick off uh, the cash at 20 cents per hour per 200 gigabytes of, of cash. You can always adjust these up and down. So for a nominal configuration of, of maybe uh, maybe 10 or 20 terabytes, you know, we're probably looking at uh, without any discounts and any any business uh, discussions that we might want to have with you folks, uh, we may be looking at uh, you know six or seven hundred dollars a month for something like that with all the features that we just talked about. We don't really nickel dime people much. We basically just we kind of go all in uh, once you create your VPSA. But this is how you do it. If you created an account. Uh, on uh, Zadar, you go to Zadar.com and you click on free trial and you'll be asked to create a simple account. Uh, then you can get into these uh, these uh, e-commerce pages and you can actually run some scenarios and look at some various pricings and things like that. We're completely uh, uh, transparent on this whole thing. Uh, you can you can basically look at it all as you need to. But another great question. Quite a pricing always comes up. Yep, yep, it does. And, and uh, I know we have time for just one more. Uh, somebody had asked uh, uh, for a quick run through on on-premises. I, you know, I, I, I get the sense from this question that it's, is it really uh, the same on-premises as it is in the cloud? Uh, and Doug, you know, you've done a bunch of these uh, deployments. Yeah, in fact, that all came, uh, we, when we started this company seven and a half years ago, uh, boy, it's hard to believe, um, we uh, we expected us to sort of live in the in the public cloud. We expected that to be our our uh, you know where we were going to head for the for the near future. And I had a great customer that we had been doing work in our public cloud, and they said, Doug, we love what you do in in the cloud. We love everything about it. We love your pay as you go. We love your throttle up and down. We love your chargeback. We love everything. But there's only going to be like 50, 40 or 50 percent of our data that can go to the public cloud. There's some that are gonna have to stay behind in the data center. Uh, we'll call it religion, we'll call it political, we'll call it all kinds of different reasons, management, but, but, but just suffice to say it's gotta stay here. Is there any way we can basically take your cloud experience and move it to on-premises? And I, I said, hmm, that's an interesting question. Uh, and I went back and I talked to my executive team and uh, short story, uh, long story short, we basically, uh, born, we, we basically had uh, on-prem as a service was born that day, and we went back to the customer and say, yes, we're going to be able to ship two or more storage nodes to you. Remember, we talked about storage nodes. We're going to be able to ship to you um, uh, disks and networking and all the various pieces, and you're going to already you already know the interface, you already know everything to do. So now you're going to have the ability to uh, to basically create this environment uh, on premises. So and and then we can mirror it to the public cloud. We can go up and down the continuum. Uh, that is truly hybrid uh, storage. So yes, it was born out of the needs of a customer wanting to. 
today, 50% of Zadar business is on premises and 50% is in the public cloud. A really nice balance between exactly what the industry says is going to happen. Uh, we're seeing that through our own customers, which is always nice when marketing data meets reality. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you for that. Okay, so we're, we're coming to the end of our session. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, we've enjoyed sharing with you a little bit more about Zadara and uh, Google Cloud Platform. We hope you've enjoyed it as well. Again, if you have questions, I'm going to go to our last slide here so that you can see where to reach us. Please do feel free to reach out at sales at Zadara.com and we'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, everybody, thanks again for joining us. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.